There are two different kinds of people who come to yoga class with back pain. There are the types who are very stiff and tight. Maybe they sit all day at a computer and they're not very active. And their back pain is usually because of a lot of pressure on the spine. Their muscles are tight and there's not a lot of movement. For those individuals, when they come to yoga, they actually do very well right away because if you work on opening up the pelvis and the hips and the muscles around the spine, very often that helps to relieve pressure on the low back. So for individuals who tend to be not very flexible, actually yoga is great for them and they do very well from yoga class. The people who are a little more problematic are the bendy people, the people who are yoga teachers or dancers who are very flexible in their spine yet they have back pain. And so they're a little more complicated to treat and it happens to be that these are the people who hurt their backs in yoga class. I'm included in this uh, scenario where I began practicing yoga and it helped me in the beginning with back pain. But after a while, I started practicing pretty aggressively, working into deep back bends without as much awareness as I should have had. And I over compressed my spine and ended up herniating a disc. So it does happen in yoga class where people are focused a little too much on what the pose should look like and not enough about what the pose should feel like not out of any desire to do it wrong, but rather just because they don't know or maybe nobody pointed out certain instructions to them. These people are harder to work with, but it's very rewarding because they can enjoy a full practice as long as they maintain integrity of their spine when they're practicing. So we have these two different kinds of people, but for both of them, really what we wanna do is adhere to a few common principles when we work with back pain. The first most important principle is that we wanna maintain the natural curves of the spine, which means we want to have a natural lumbar curve. We do wanna have an arch in the low back. We're not trying to get rid of that arch in the low back. For the people who are really tight, what we wanna do is release tension in the hamstrings and the muscles around the pelvis so that the spine can be in a neutral curve. For the people who are very flexible, they may be actually overextending their spine and compressing. So there may be too much of a back bend. And often those people tend to have very tight hip flexors and especially tight psoas. So either way, whether you're too mobile in your spine or not mobile enough, we wanna come back to a neutral. So that's a very important principle. The other principle that I wanna point out is that for everyone, we wanna work on lifting the pit of the abdomen. The pit of the abdomen is the area of the lower belly. So it's the area between the navel and the pubic bone, the lower abdomen. And the focus will be on drawing the belly in, back, and up. This is done on the exhalation. The important thing that I wanna point out here is that we don't wanna talk about the tailbone or the pelvis, especially not tucking the tailbone what we want to focus on is lengthening the front body. Because often when we tuck or when we tighten, we compress the spine, we actually shrink. But the lifting of the belly creates a natural descent of the tailbone. It's very different to descend the tailbone than to tuck the tailbone. We want a dropping of the back body, but not a tucking under of the back body. So instead of talking about the back body, because if we talk about the tailbone, people will automatically tuck. That's their tendency. We just want a lift of the pit of the abdomen, really drawing this belly in and up, which will maintain stability around the spine. It will access the deep abdominal muscles, the transversus abdominis, and it will create length in the lower back. And finally, we want to really focus on creating softness and length in the psoas muscle because the psoas muscle attaches to the discs and the bodies of the vertebrae and goes all the way down the front of the pelvis to join up with the iliacus and crosses over the hip joint. And it has a very strong impact on the pull of the spine, creating maybe too much of an arch. So the emphasis will be on opening and releasing tension in the psoas, not only through stretching, but also through breathing techniques and relaxation and learning how to soften the groin. So there are many, many things we can do for lower back pain. 
and I will share some of my favorite techniques with you. But all of them focus on maintaining the natural curves of the spine, on lifting the lower belly, on releasing tension in the psoas area. The final point that I wanna make is that our focus will be on traction, on creating length, on making space between the vertebrae. Because anytime there's back pain, it's because of compression. It's because of pinching of structures. Sometimes a spinal nerve is being pinched between the joints. Sometimes a disc is pressing on a nerve. And sometimes there's just pressure between the joints themselves. And so the traction will help to release tension and pain in the low back as well. 